A few months ago, I picked up a World of Nintendo fiber optic sign, and it actually had a few issues. There was four broken fibers and two that were out of sequence. I'm at my buddy Matt's house now. We're taking it apart and we're trying to fix it. So we took the back off. We found a bunch of fibers that are broken halfway. So we've marked these. We're gonna add length to them. And then we're gonna drill out the holes and try to plug them back in in their proper sequence. So the first thing we did is we just had the wheel running and we could just sort of mark what ends we could see. And now the next step is we've marked the front with fibers that we have that we know are out. So we should be able to just turn this off. And if we shine a flashlight from this side, through the broken one. Yeah, and so one of these fiber ends that we marked, we know that that corresponds to the fiber that's out in the letter O. So we just gotta keep track of all that. See what we can trace. So here's an end to one of the fibers that's out on the front side. And then one of these right here, I don't know if you can see back in there, that one we're probably gonna have to drill. Yeah, it's a pretty good technique for tracing it though. So we're marking it with blue. Yep, because these two go together. So what we did basically is if you look at the front of this sign, you can see where we've marked this fiber. Now that fiber is out. The two on either side of it work just fine. So basically what we did is we'll take a flashlight and we'll shine it to a fiber on either side and then see where it lights up in the bank. And so I can see this fiber and then that fiber. So we want the fiber that's right in between those two, right? And so then what we do is we shine it from this side. We see which of the ends, like for instance, I got an end glowing right here. So then we switch it around, shine the light in from this side, and then we can see in the bank if that's a match for being one of the adjacent fibers to the one we're looking for. So could you see that, could you hand me that other flashlight there? So for instance, we got that one right there. And then if, I, if you look in the bank right now, Jordan, you can see we got there. So those probably aren't a match, right? Nope, they're too far to the left. See, okay, so then we know that it's not this one. And so this blue one, see we already went and found this. So if I light up this blue one right here, you can see where it lights up in the bank. And if I light it up from the front side, you can see that it's right in between, right in between those two fibers that are lighting up. So we know that this right here goes to that out fiber. And we've been marking the ends of all the broken ones as we go along, trying to find which ones they correspond to. Yeah, so right now we know that blue goes to blue. So once we make this connection, that particular fiber should be fixed on the front side. One of these fibers, we're gonna have to drill. This one right here, it's actually broken right on the other side of the uh, panel. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try to mark a fiber with something pointy and it'll give my drill bit a spot to rest on. Hopefully that'll work. Actually it's kind of cracking away. Here I'll use a flush cutter. Yeah that didn't quite work the way I wanted. So I'll cut that off flush. Let's get a nice little mark right in the middle for my drill bit to catch. It's pretty clean cut. Just gonna stick it right through the other side, put some adhesive.
pulled the fiber through. It's not glued in place yet, but we're going to turn it on, make sure that it illuminates properly before we go any further with it. So, powered it on. Looks like it's illuminating properly. And, and it's the correct fiber. <laughs> that's and it's a, the correct fiber. That, that's a big one. It's in sequence. That's what matters the most. Mm. It's not weak. This one over here that we repaired is kind of illuminating weak. And we believe it's because there's multiple couplings inside. So we're going to drill that one out and replace the entire fiber strand as well. Yeah, might as well. All right. So we fixed the two in the racetrack. Now we're going to fix the two that are out of sequence in the letter I. We're going to drill those out and reroute them. Pretty much rinse and repeat what we did before. Yep. Hopefully get a little indent there for the drill bit to fit in. So we've marked the ones that need to be repaired and we're just fixing the two that were out of sequence because they were added in after the fact and they weren't added in in the proper position so yeah. yeah so the fiber that was supposed to go there is actually this guy right here see how that's broken off very close to the bank so we're going to extend that and figure out which one of those places it's supposed to go to so this one that he's gluing here at the bank we couldn't find a break for halfway, so we had to add it in after the fact. And that is the one for up here in the letter O. Total of six fiber repairs. We're gonna kill the lights and see how it illuminates. Yeah. Let me put this thing on the floor. Let's see what it looks like. So really, everything really did go perfectly, except for these two, which we didn't know if we could do anything about. They wound up being a little dim. Like, when you look at it from a side angle, they still look a little weak. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to tell, but they're right there. And we tried, like, melting the ends of the fiber and things like that, but ultimately it's just, you know, if you have a coupling in there, it's gonna, gonna... you're going to lose a little bit of light. Yep. So this is the inside of the World of Nintendo sign. There's a light bulb here that shines all the light through this metal box which goes through this rotating color wheel which goes into these bundles of fibers at the ends here world of nintendo fiber optic sign the repair went really smooth i'm really happy with how everything turned out the only issue is that these two that were out of sequence in the letter i when you look at it from like a side view they don't really appear to be on for some reason, but when you do look at it dead on, it illuminates properly. And that's what matters most. Unfortunately, I actually don't own the World of Nintendo Fiber Optic sign anymore. I sold it on Instagram in order to fund the Game Boy and the Super Nintendo Fiber signs, which are so much cooler in my opinion. But. The guy that I sold the fiber sign to, he actually went through the process and fully repaired the two dim lights, and he was kind enough to take a bunch of footage and verbally kind of walk us through it. So I'm gonna roll that footage now. This is a quick tutorial on how to splice two fiber optic wires together within a fiber optic sign, specifically a world, world Nintendo sign, which I'll be using in this video. And the primary objective in this video is just to inform you on the proper equipment, supplies, and process to follow to give an effective result. So for those of you who may be fortunate enough to own one of these signs, you may have experienced a situation where one or more of the lights on the front of the sign are completely unlit. Uh, this is usually due to a broken wire or fiber as some call it within the sign. While it's possible to completely replace the wire, that procedure can lead to a variety of complications and challenges, uh, which I won't cover in this video. Uh, but there is an alternative, least invasive solution, and that's to simply splice or couple the broken wire back together. Uh, however, this isn't really done by simply taping the two ends of the wires together and calling it a day. Um, 
by doing that, it won't really give you a good result or the light output is returned to its original state. I would say it, at best it'd be about 70%, which is not what most people would want um, with these signs. Um, so while a splice won't give you that 100% solution compared to replacing the wire, I have found that there's a specific, um, there's a specific procedure to follow with the right equipment and supplies that will most likely get to, an, to a 95% result. So that's what we're gonna go over in this video today. So let's go over the proper equipment and supplies you're gonna need. Uh, starting at the top here, I'm gonna be pointing with this chopstick just so you can follow along a little bit better. Uh, you're gonna need a series of uh, polishing pads. Uh, I got these on Amazon. In fact, I got all of this on Amazon, so keep that in mind. Uh, but these pads start at 320 grit and they go all the way up to 12,000 grit. Uh, and what you're gonna be doing uh, with this is you're actually be polishing the ends of the fiber. I'm, I'm gonna explain why that's important. Um, but yeah, so it starts 320 grit up to 12,000. I also have a 15,000 grit uh, paper here as well. So we're gonna walk you through how to use that. I also have some Ikea furniture pegs and this is gonna be the mechanism for coupling the wires together. I'll explain why I use these and why they're important. Uh, the other piece is a mini drill bit set. So this is from Gyros. These are really small drill bits. These are in um, millimeter or less size. Uh, you're gonna need that to drill a hole through these Ikea furniture pegs and so that the wires can, um, can in be inserted into the pegs and so they can meet in the middle. You're also gonna need a Dremel tool, which I have here, and that's just gonna be used for uh, doing the drilling. And lastly, you're gonna need a set of um, actual fiber optic wires. So you're going to need, at least in my sign, there's two different sizes. There's a, a 0.75 millimeter size, and then there's a 0.5 millimeter size. Fortunately, um, nothing smaller in this sign. Although there are some signs that go to 0.25, which those are very difficult to work with, especially when splicing. Um, but today the break that happened occurred on the 0.75 millimeter size. Um, and I'm gonna walk you through why you need these. Even though we're not replacing a wire, we are gonna be using um, pieces of this to do a couple of things. So that covers all the equipment. Okay, let's talk about the procedure we're gonna be using uh, to do the splice. There's two main objectives in this procedure. Number one, you wanna join the ends of the fibers together so that you've maximized the amount of light flowing from the source fiber to the output fiber. So that's number one. Number two, you wanna have a splice that's long lasting, enduring, and it doesn't bend, uh, it's sturdy, and it can be easily undone in case you need to. So uh, the first part, to get the maximum output of light through a splice, you have to do a couple of things. Uh, number one, um, it's all about the fact that this wire broke, uh, or the fiber broke, I could say. Um, it's not a clean break. If you look really closely, if you have a magnifying glass, you will notice that it's not, it's not smooth. It's kind of jagged. It's almost like broken glass a little bit. Uh, it, it's not even and you know it, it scatters the light uh, coming out uh, even though you can't really see it up close uh, it does it in a way that it, it impacts the output of the light so if you have two broken ends and you join them together uh, it's not going to be carrying as much light through as you would with say a very smooth edged uh, polished end uh, which is what you're going to have to do to get this to work um, so what you're doing is polishing the ends. You're gonna be polishing the output fiber um, where the break happened. You're also gonna be polishing the source fiber where the break happened. Um, even though I'm saying there's an output fiber and a source fiber, it's still one fiber ultimately uh, where it came from. Um, so to do that, you're gonna take your polishing pads. And again, these are very sturdy, small polishing pads. You don't want anything flimsy or bendable. Uh, and you're gonna take, I usually start with 600. 
So you take your pad and you take your fiber and you basically do it in a way that you make these small circular motions, not too hard. If you do it too roughly or too aggressively, you will actually break, <laughs> you'll start to chip away at the fiber end. So you wanna do it very smoothly. But another thing you wanna consider though is you need to make sure that it's flat. If you have your fiber and you're doing it like this, as you can see, it's starting to polish the edges too. It's making a rounded end and you don't want that. You want a flat polished end only. Uh, that's the only way this is gonna work. So you could do that in a couple ways. Um, I, you can hold it really close and just do very delicate circular motions, making sure the, the wire is not bending. Uh, there's another way you could use uh, by taking one of the uh, dowel rod pegs, like these Ikea pegs. I've already prepared this. And again, like I said, you drill a hole through it using this drill bit set here. Uh, I use specifically size 62, um, but your mileage may vary. It might be size 64 or 66, but uh, as you can see, yeah, I've already drilled the hole here. So you insert into the peg right here and you leave a little bit of the fiber poking out the end. I don't know if you can see that. And this will give you a very sturdy edge to use. And then you can use that to do the polishing. Um, one trick here is you have to sort of hold it like that at the end so that it doesn't slip out. And then you just do it like this. Okay, not too much. So that was 600. Um, and then you can you graduate up to like 1,000. And do a little bit there. Okay, not too much. Again, you don't want to break the end. Uh, you go from, you know, 600, 1,000, 2,000. Sometimes, like, I tried 3,000. That seemed to do a good job. You don't need to do every gradation. It's not that important. You just need to do a, a fairly reasonable gradation all the way up to 8,000, 12,000, and then 15,000. So once you've done... Uh, once you've done up to 15,000, you will notice that, and if you've done it correctly and, and the actual fiber end is flat and fully polished, if you look at the fiber on the end, you will notice it has a very mirror-like finish to it. You can't really see that in this video. Uh, this one hasn't been polished, but uh, if it's flat and polished, it will have a very mirror-like um, appearance to it. That's what you want. Um, so when you have that and you do it for both ends, okay, now you've prepped the fiber or the wire uh, to be joined effectively to allow the most light to pass through it. Uh, so next you take your peg, all right, you take your peg and let's assume that this is the output wire end and this is the source wire end, just for an example here you would insert them into the peg like that and they meet in the middle and that will give you a good result. Why am I using an Ikea peg? You might be asking. Well, number one, it, they're easy to work with, they're cheap, uh, but they're sturdy. It, it provides a sturdy, uh, opaque um, mechanism that's not gonna bend or break uh, that you can prepare easily with a drill um, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to find met metallic tubing or plastic tubing that meets your size requirements. So it's easy to, to work with this and drill different size holes as you need um, to make this thing. Uh, when this is in the sign, you're also going to want to tape these ends together with a non-chemically bonding tape. Uh, you don't want to chemically alter the, the fiber itself because that's gonna result in degradation of the light output. So again, you just, you insert into the peg, you tape both ends, and then you're good to go. It's really that simple. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is, 
after you drill the peg, you're going to need to, um, you need to understand that there's going to be dust within this and you don't want dust to occlude uh, the light output. So you need to take a piece of fiber, which I cut from this strand and you just kind of run it through almost like cleaning the, um, it's basically cleaning the inside of any dust. So you definitely want to do that because I've had a result where I didn't do that and it affected the light output you know, considerably. So that's why you need these strands here. Uh, but also it's good to have extra strands just in case you do need to do a, a full replacement. But anyways, that's what uh, this is for. All right. Uh, so that covers the procedure. Um, so let's show you the result. Okay, here's a view of inside my sign. Uh, just to show you what I've done here, I'm going to point again with this trusty chopstick. Uh, but there's the splice. You can see. I'm going to zoom in there. Try to get some focus. There we go. You can see there's light passing right through. Unfortunately, the break happened way at the base of this bundle here, so you can't really see the output. I, I'm I'm sorry, the the source fiber, but you can see the output coming out uh, that end. So uh, the the two ends have been polished and are flat and they're doing their thing. So uh, really simple as that. I haven't taped it yet, just because I wanted to show you what this looks like. So I could easily just pull this out. And that's the other thing you want to make sure you, you don't want to do anything you can't undo easily. And so that's kind of uh, the nice thing about this procedure. So uh, let's take a look at the front. That's what matters the most. You're all wondering. Um, let's take a look at these lights here. Get a good side view. Try to guess which one is the splice. Maybe do a, a front view here. It doesn't look as good on camera as it does in person, trust me, but yeah, if you could try to tell where the splice happened. Okay, so I'm gonna point this out now. The splice happened right here. This, this top part of the eye. I'm kind of waving in front of it right here, right there. That's the splice. Uh, in my opinion, this is like really good. Like it's, you can't tell that it's been broken. You can't tell that it's been spliced. Another cool thing to note is this bottom light right below it, right here, kind of running my chopstick in front of it. All right, let's try to zoom in here. This is actually a, a full wire replacement. And you can see that it's actually not as bright as this place, which I think is interesting. But there you go. Um, you can make a splice work. If you use this procedure, the light output will be indistinguishable from the rest. No one's gonna be able to tell unless they open the thing up. And that's what you want. So that's all I got. Thanks guys. When the fiber strand is broken right on the other side of the panel, it's pretty easy to fix. You just gotta drill out the hole and then plug it back in. But when the fiber strand is actually broken halfway, it can get pretty tricky. So I just wanna say a huge shout out to my buddy Matt and my buddy Travis for taking their time to help me fix this sign. Uh, especially Travis here because he took his time to make that footage for us and properly show us how to couple them and get it to illuminate. So that's gonna be it for this video. I'm hoping down the road this can help some other sign owners that stumble across this video, help them repair their sign. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for subscribing and on to the next.